Ben Johnson on why he stayed in Detroit. I had a little conversation with Tim Twentyman. Uh, talked about his prog- progression, excuse me, as a coach. And quote, uh, don't ruin a good thing. It's uh, kind of a, a lifestyle. It's, uh, it's something to hold on to. And my takeaway from it, really the whole conversation, Jeff, was this is a guy who knows how good he is, but who was there during the Patricia era. And he's seen all the hardworking people in the building and the fans still showing up and all the talk. And he knows he can be part, potentially, of a football team that ends the drought of division titles, that ends the doubt, uh, excuse me, ends the drought of not only getting to the playoff, but winning a playoff game. Haven't won a playoff game since 91, the division since 93, 94. So he sees an opportunity to give back to a, a franchise that has given him, uh, given him an opportunity, which he obviously has taken advantage of. He deserves full credit for it, but uh, I love it. I love the empathy he's shown, and it, again, I'm so confident in him going into next year, Jeff. I mean, what a home run he's been. Yeah, this is the one of the biggest, I guess, positives of the offseason. And you could say Ben Johnson. He's the second best Johnson in Lions history. I mean, we already made that declaration. And, and the quote in the interview that I absolutely love, there's two of them really. One of them, uh, Ben Johnson says, it's really simple for me. And he said, I've, it starts with this place and these people. Been here for four years now. I believe in Sheila Hamp and what she's doing. Rod Wood, Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes. It starts at the top and trickles down. He said, this is as encouraged as I've been in my four years with the direction of the Lions and where we're headed. And he, he kind of mentioned also in that story and how he went to a Garth Brooks concert at Ford Field um, during one of his first off seasons in Detroit coming over from the Miami Dolphins, being in Ford Field at that concert, it was packed, and he's thinking to himself, I can only imagine a home playoff game here at Ford Field and what that would mean to the city. And not only the fact that he talked about the organization, ownership, you know, leadership, which is huge. We don't, we don't typically hear that. Usually it's the other, it's the opposite. You know, you're criticizing the ownership or the leadership. But he also mentioned how he wants to be here when there is success. And I think that's the most significant part of this entire thing. And we, I've hammered this multiple times, but I got to say it again because it's so important. Assistant coaches and coaches in general, you typically come to the Lions and that's it for you, uh, typically, in terms of being another head coach. It's very hard. I mean, you've seen previous head coaches for the Lions. They typically don't get another head coaching gig. Or you look at assistants like Jim Bob Cooter. He was the OC, hasn't been an OC since. Like, these things typically happen. But for Ben Johnson to kind of break that curse <clears throat> in what he's meant to the organization, the interest he's drawn from NFL teams, he had a lot of leverage this offseason. He, I, I don't know what the likelihood of him getting a job was, but I'd say it was probably high this offseason. Hey, I'm the telling you right now, fact, two teams... The fact that he chose to come back, man, that's, that's huge. I'm telling you right now, I know for a fact, two teams hired their second and third option. I'll say that. And that, again, for a guy who has that much leverage to come back to Detroit because he loves the not only the people, the team itself, and where the team's going and the direction they're going in, it kind of just stamps everything we've been talking about for months uh, to really end the season. So it's exciting, man. And you, you want Ben Johnson back with this offense. Look, I, they set an NFL record last season, uh, or I guess it was the best in the NFL, scoring 30 points in, what, seven, eight straight games, which is a franchise record. Yep, He's done yep. great things with this organization in such a little amount of time. I think they led the NFL in 30-point games uh, over the course of the season as well. Yes. And I think that was the, the quote-unquote record I was talking about. And you tell me what they all have in common, okay? Jonathan, Jonathan Gannon. Mm-hmm. Shane Steichen. I'm not going to include Frank Reich or Sean Payton, given their uh, previous experience. And then D'Amico Ryans. What do D'Amico Ryans, Jonathan Gannon, and Shane Steichen all have in common as coordinators? They were hyper successful on a winning team. Pretty quickly, too. And Ben, as in Ben Johnson, rose all the way up. Peak interest. Why? Well, it wasn't that the Lions were 9-8. and eight, More so than, again, say, say stuff out loud. You know, like, 
how, how do I explain this? Like, you know, your buddy's texting you at 2 in the morning. Hey, uh, let's go grab some drinks. Let's go grab drinks at 2 in the morning. Doesn't sound like a good idea to me. It's a, it's a Wednesday. I got work tomorrow. <laughs> right? Say it out loud. Every once in a while. Who knows? Might, might help you clarify a few things. But say this out loud. Ben Johnson had a top five offense with Jared Goff, who was a castaway from Sean McVay, at quarterback. Uh, yes, a very good offensive line, but a banged-up backfield in DeAndre Swift most of the season. Oh, and Amon Ross St. Brown was their leading pass catcher and receiving guy, and he barely averaged just over 10 yards of reception. Oh, Jameson Williams, their first-round draft pick, didn't play most of the year. It was Josh Reynolds, DJ Chark, Lee Freeman. Oh, and they traded their Pro Bowl tight end, and they got better, and their quarterback got better. Brock Wright, Shane Zilstra. Somehow they got better. The NFL looked at Ben Johnson and said, Oh, God, this makes sense. It's so easy for us. But what do you think the NFL is going to think of Ben Johnson next year? If the Lions go out and finish 11-6, and 12-5, and right. and they win the division. He's as good as God. He will be Steichen. He will be Gannon. He will be D'Amico Ryans. He will be the most sought-after coordinator mm -hmm. in the NFL market next year. It's it's a home run, in my opinion, that this team it's it's worthy of a top ten draft pick that this team was able to keep Ben Johnson. I, I can't say enough good things, Jeff. And and that's the biggest thing with this offense is we talk about winning the division. The fact that Ben came back, that's one of the main points for me. You you get to retain your OC and just to correct what I said uh earlier, the thirty or more points in eight games, they tied for the most in the NFL. So regardless, just want to correct that stat. But he was one of the most significant pieces of this team last year. The offense we know was a strong suit. We know what he did for Jared Goff. We know what he did for Ahmad Ra his rookie year. That's why with Jamison playing, really I would say his first year, played a couple games last year, but his first full year, you want Ben Johnson there. Like the, the guy knows how to get the most out of his players. And for a team that has so many young players, you might, who knows who you draft this year. And that's that goes for AG too. AG showed he can develop young guys. And that's the point I was making with assistance. Is typically assistance for the Lions leave for demotions. They leave for positions that they didn't have with the Lions. If Aaron Glenn and Ben Johnson leave, it's going to be for, for a promotion. Which Likely. T like good organizations do. I mean, typically you leave to go get a promotion. So, unless you're fired and you take a lateral job. But Ben Johnson, to me, he's... And you've heard players talk about it. That's why we were so high on him. I mean, you hear Jared Goff, Brock Wright, Amon Ra. The list goes on and on and on about how important he is to this offense. So, again, him coming back, I think that's why you hear division, division, division winners because of him. And not just him, but he's a big part of it. And I, I, we talked about this with Dan Campbell. I don't think he gets enough credit for his involvement in the offense, but you got to have a good play caller. So, at, at the end of the day, Ben deserves a ton of credit, man. And this is huge, not only for the offense, but for Jared Goff specifically. It is huge. Jared Goff had Because he's arguably... had how many different offensive coordinators since he's been in the league? I think it, I mean you've had Sean McVay. He, no, he, but Goff has been fortunate. He walked in a Jeff Fisher. It was a goddamn disaster. Zero and seven is his rookie year as a starter. Uh, in comes Sean McVay, and the rest is history. And then you come um, to the Lions. You Goff go, has had a stable career in that. Sense. I guess I should say with the Lions, you have Anthony Lynn. Then it switches to Dan. It was a disaster. And then you get they won, yeah. and he looked really bad because of it. Mm -hmm. And again, it's it's funny. Uh, look at year one, Jared Goff, disaster, right? But what we all still say, he's a British quarterback. Year two, phenomenal season. 4,000 plus yards, 29 touchdowns, only what, seven, eight interceptions? And what are we saying about Jared Goff? British quarterback. <laughs> Not the guy you're, you're paying a, a five year, set, six year extension uh, to be the guy for, of your franchise. Now, maybe the Lions see that differently. I would be very, very very cautious in saying that it's a done deal that 100 percent they're committed but look right now they're committed to him under his current contract anybody that wants to bring up contract extensions or say that jared goff this jared goff that shut up shut up dude's got two more full seasons as a starting quarterback here uh maybe at the end of next year we can consider an extension but even then what's the marker going to be huh because jalen hurts is going to get 45 50 million and he he not that. <laughs> Mahomes, he got forty five million. He's not that. 
Hill. Herbert's going to get it. Allen got it. Lawrence is going to get it. That's when you can legitimately have that conversation. And be like, ah, you know what? Hey, you know what? We're going to do the Kirk Cousins thing. One year, $35, $40 million. Uh, we'll eat it. We'll do what we got to do. Uh, and let's go figure out who the quarterback of the future is. I just don't see a scenario, no matter the success they have. Okay, I mean, that that's I'm, what I was going to ask. Yeah, you. I just I don't see the scenario where you pay this guy forty forty five million dollars when it's obvious you got to pay Aiden Hutchinson in the future. He'll be an All Pro player. Right. You're going to have to pay Jamison Williams. Amon Ross St. Brown's going to command Panay big Sewell time money coming down the pipeline. Panay Sewell. You're going to have to revamp that offensive line by the time Jared Goff's contract expires. Mm -hmm. Decker might be out of town by then. Uh, Ragnar, who knows how he'll be performing at that age. Uh, there's a lot ahead of you. So I don't want to jump too far. That's why I want to just enjoy the moment. Right now, you got the second best quarterback in the NFC. Not going to fix what's not broken. Right. But eventually, we're going to have to have a tough conversation. And I don't know. We don't know how much Goff will ask for specifically. But that is assuming, also true. Assuming he, he wants what you're, you're talking about. I don't think there'll be anything Goff can do statistically to change my mind, at least. And I don't know if you would agree. Like, if he comes out this season, has a similar year, has a pretty good year. Let's say he throws 30 touchdowns, 8, 9 picks, maybe 10 picks. Well, that's what Kirk Cousins has been doing the last few years. Bingo. So, so I, I think we've already came to that conclusion. Appreciate Goff. He, he's a middle of the again, pack quarterback. I, I like Goff. Yeah, a lot. good enough to win divisions. Good I, enough I to think win a playoff he can game. Accomplish a lot. Yes. But when you talk to me about Super Bowl, that's when that conversation kind of gets a little sour. Especially, but if, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I want right. to start with the divisions. That's what matters right now. And you know what? By the end of his contract, I may want to extend him a year or two. I might want to keep it going. Right. Maybe he takes a team friendly deal. I don't know. All speculation. But it all leads back to Ben Johnson, his decision to stay, and how confident I think most of you are, including us, uh, are in this team right now. And I think the positive of him coming back, too, is you're able... Now it's a much more clearer, like, okay, this guy is going to get a head coaching job. It's not it's not if, it's when. You can groom the next guy behind Ben. And, that, and Tanner Engstrand, someone that I've been high on, we've talked about him a lot. He actually got the promotion. He's just strictly a pass game coordinator. He's not a tight ends coach anymore. They brought in, I uh, can't remember the name off the top of my head, to coach the tight ends. Now Tanner Engstrand can just focus on the pass game, coordinate that. They're grooming. And if Ben leaves, They're grooming. you got Tanner. So I, I, this is what good organizations do. You groom coaches. And now that you know Ben's leaving, like if you would have left this offseason, I think you probably would have had a little – you know, you'd, you'd be nervous. You'd be nervous because you don't have an immediate replacement. But now again, you can prepare I, I for I still it. think Ben Johnson. Yes. Ben Johnson is brilliant. He, he is. is. Everything is advertised and more. But Dan Campbell allows him, and I, that's a key word, allows him to be free, allows him to make decisions. And when you empower someone and they're successful, that is a plus on your leadership. That is a reflection on it as well. So, I got nothing but good things to say.